To compute a matrix exponential, let's start with the non-defective case. So A will be an n by n matrix with n eigenvalues and n independent eigenvectors. We'll define a matrix V whose columns are the eigenvectors. That's an n by n matrix. It must be an invertible matrix that follows from the fact that the columns are independent. Then we have a formula for the matrix exponential e to the ta. It's the vector it's the matrix V times a diagonal matrix with exponentials of the eigenvalues on the diagonal times V inverse. So this is our workhorse formula in the non-defective case. As an aside, why does this formula work? Where does it come from? Well, if we take these um, exponentials times vectors, those are independent solutions of our homogeneous problem. So x is a fundamental matrix for x prime equals a times x. We'll define a new matrix y of t as x of t times the inverse of x at 0. And then we can find two important facts. If we differentiate y, we just take the derivative of that first x, and the second one is constant. So y prime is equal to a times x times x0 inverse, since x is fundamental. And by the definition of y, that's just a times y. So y is also a fundamental matrix. And if we evaluate y at 0, we just get x at 0 times its inverse, so we get the identity. And from that, it's enough to conclude that y must be the matrix exponential. If you work out the definitions we were using, you'll see that it's equivalent to the other formula. As an example, let's find the matrix exponential of this 2 by 2. By now, I think you're comfortable working out the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, so I'll just write them out. We'll let V be the matrix of the two eigenvectors. And now we just compute the inverse of V, which we will need for the formula. We have our little 2 by 2 inverse computation, which we know how to do pretty easily. And now the matrix exponential is V times the diagonal matrix of eigenvalue exponentials. And you want to take those eigenvalues in the same order as the eigenvectors for this to work. And then we have V inverse. Now it's just some matrix multiplication to get to the answer. One quarter is a scalar. I can pull that through the whole thing. Multiplying the first two together, I get e to the 3t plus 0. I get 0 minus 2 e to the negative t. And then I get 2 e to the 3t and negative 2 e to the negative t. The last matrix comes down, and now I multiply these two together to get the final result.
Here's an example of an initial value problem with a 2 by 2 matrix. And we'll solve this by the matrix exponential. Once again, we can figure out what the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are. In this case, they are complex, which means that the other ones are their complex conjugates. Okay, V is the matrix of the eigenvectors. We have to find its inverse. So we have 1 over the determinant. Swap the two diagonals and negate the others. And then 1 over i is equal to negative i, so we can simplify that fraction as so. And finally, we'll take that negative i inside and use the fact that i squared is equal to negative 1 to simplify things. So there's b inverse. Okay, the solution of the initial value problem is e to the ta times the initial x. I have to remind myself what v was. So there's v times diagonal of the exponentials for the eigenvalues. Negative 1 plus i and negative 1 minus i in order. times v inverse. Times the initial x. And let me just go back sure, back and make sure, yeah, that's the correct initial x. Now these first three matrices grouped together are the matrix exponential. But I can save myself a little work if I group the thing differently matrix multiplication is associative. So if I group the last two together, that is also a vector. So I can do less work in the end. So I'll leave the first two matrices alone and multiply the last two. I get 1 minus 2i minus i. And I get 1 plus 2i plus i. All right, and I'm going to continue working from right to left. So now I'll do this matrix times the vector. And since that matrix diagonal, it's relatively simple. Now both of these have an e to the negative t in them, so I'm going to pull that through everything. And then I have my first matrix, which was v, times this vector without the e to the negative t. Now we're just going to have to bear down and do this multiplication. So I get that 1 minus 3i times e to the it plus the second row 1 plus 3i times e to the minus it. And then second row first column, or second row times the column, I should say, is just 2 minus i times 1 minus 3i times e to the it plus the other term.
The first row is just this number plus its complex conjugate. In the second row, I multiply together the 1 minus 3i and 2 minus i. And then times e to the it plus the conjugate of that whole thing, too. That makes things easier because for any complex z, if you add z and its conjugate, you get two times the real part of z. Right? If you think of z as x plus iy, then you add x minus iy, you just get 2x. So finally, that 2 cancels out the 1 half out in front, and I just need to take the real part of this product, 1 minus 3i times e to the it. And I'll use Euler's identity to do that. And then the real part of this product and we're done. We still have to talk about how to compute the matrix exponential in the defective case easiest to explain with an example. So if we were to work out the eigenvalues of this matrix, we'll find the characteristic polynomial, and we'll see that it's just lambda plus 1 quantity squared. That means that lambda equals negative 1 is a double eigenvalue. If we look for eigenvectors, we look at the null space of this matrix, a minus lambda i. The null space is spanned by just a single vector. So that is an eigenvector, but there's no second independent eigenvector to find. So we say lambda equals negative 1 is a defective eigenvalue. And we could have looked at a. a is not a multiple of the identity, so with a double eigenvalue, that means it must be defective when it's 2 by 2. V turns out not to be useful to us at all in this process. Now I want to find B to be this matrix A minus lambda I, which is the one I had written down up there. And if we take B times itself, we work out very quickly Right? The 1, 1 position is 0 plus 0. The 1, 2 position is 0 plus 0. They're all 0. So b squared is the 0 matrix. Well, that's actually very interesting to us because if we look at the series for e to the tb, well, b squared is 0. And if we multiply by b again, that's 0. They're all 0 from there on. And so this infinite series actually just has two terms in it. So it's easy for us to find e to the t b, but we wanted to find e to the t a. Well, because of the way we defined b, a is just equal to b plus lambda i. So we have the exponential of the sum of two matrices. We can write that as the product of two exponentials because those two matrices do commute bi equals ib. Remember, that's a condition for splitting up the exponential that way in the matrix case. And then lambda is negative 1. e to the negative ti is just e to the negative t. And there's our e to the tb, and we have our answer.